What's up, YouTube? How's it going? Night's Edge here again. Got a uh, another Spyderco World Tour uh, knife review. This is uh, the USA branch of it, I guess. The USA leg. Um, you're not seeing things. There's definitely two knives on the table, right? So the uh, I didn't think it'd be fair to to do two different reviews of. Uh, was almost essentially the same knife, right? So this is the Manix 2 Golden Colorado USA Earth right there on the blade, just like all American made spider coes. Got a little bit of smudging on it. Actually I actually just cleaned this, I thought, but maybe not. Um go ahead and get that off of there. But uh this is the Manix 2. This is uh kind of like a a staple Spyderco knife, I would say. This is one of their flagship models. This is one of their best models. Um, you can compare it to uh, a lot of different things, uh, a lot of similarities between this and the Shaman, the uh, Paramilitary 2. Uh, very, very, very similar in a lot of ways, but there's also a lot of differences that, uh, that make a lot of people prefer the Manix <clears throat> over the Paramilitary 2 and uh the shaman and vice versa right so um i actually am probably going to do a comparison video with with all of them before too long um i figured i'd go ahead and do the reviews of the manix and the and the shaman uh before i did that though but anyway um yeah that's uh kind of like the long intro there but uh if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. It helps a lot. I appreciate every single subscriber I get, and I appreciate you guys coming back and watching. It means a lot. Um, if you haven't already, hit the like button down there. Appreciate that, too. That also uh, helps a lot. So, anyway, without further ado, uh, the other knife that's on the table here is, this is the Manix 2, right? But this is the XL. So I've got a lot of uh, a lot of KPL coming out of there. Sorry about that. He gets a little excited. All right, big guy gets a little excited. But uh, anyway, I clean that off of there. This is uh, this is the XL version. So that's what you're looking at. Size difference um, when you line them up, pivot to pivot. Right, you line up the butt end like that. That's about the size difference. So definitely, uh, the XL is definitely larger. That's why it's called the XL, right? But uh, anyway, uh, we'll have both of the, I guess I'll, I'll keep them both up here for measurements and size comparisons. Two totally, uh, or two, two different sets of measurements on them. So looking at the Manix 2, regular Manix 2 coming in at 8 inches overall length. Uh, blade length, you're looking at three and three, let's see, just under three and a half, maybe three and three eighths, uh, cutting edge right at three inches, just right at three inches. Thanks that forward choil there, finger choil. And whenever you look at the Manix 2A, nine inches overall. All right, so the Manix, the Manix 2XL, the Manix 2 being at 8 inches, Manix 2 XL sits right at, eh, I'm not, I mean, that's not, I don't think full 9 inches is almost there. 8 and 15 sixteenths, it's almost 9 inches, right, overall. Uh, the blade length on the Manix 2 XL sitting right at 4 inches. And the cutting edge on the Manix 2 XL three and a half inches so three and a half inch cutting edge on this three inch cutting edge on that um nine inches round about overall on this eight inches overall on that so you know a definite uh definite size difference um that i guess would probably be the best way to explain my uh sizing of knives on the channel you know th this is a, a pretty good example along with a couple other things but you know i would call this a 
I would call this an extra large, you know, uh, knife, and I would call this a large, a full size uh, folding knife at eight inches. Would, but um, anyway, go ahead and get the calibers out. Make sure they're zeroed out here. Do the blade stock thickness just above the spidey hole right there. You're looking at 117 thousandths thickest part. Uh, on the belly, below the edge, you go below the edge right there, and 35 thousandths right there, right before you get to the edge, 34 thousandths. This one, ahead, turn that off, back on, zero it out, all right. Blade stock thickness, same spot, 120, eh, right there, 114 thousandths actually on that, 119 thousandths is what I'm getting there, 115 thousandths there, and right at the belly, 31 thousandths, 30 and a half thousandths. All right, so it, it looks to me like the, the stock, um, and you know, I could be reading it wrong or whatever, but to me, it seems like looking at that, this, the blade stock thickness is actually uh, is thinner on the, the XL than it is on the Manix too, which is, you know, it's not an, incre an incredible amount. Um, but it actually seems like uh, it, it seems like looking at those measurements that the Manix 2XL has actually got thinner blade stock just by a little bit, which is uh, pretty interesting. You know? um, anyway, that's the uh, the dimensions as far as length and the blade stock thickness. We'll go ahead and move on to uh, let's see what's going to be next here. We'll go ahead and get the scale out. Move this one out the way I don't know if anybody's actually done a review of the Manix 2 with the Manix 2 XL in the video um, might not be <laughs> the best of ideas because uh, I could probably get a whole nother review out of you know out of just this one or just this one or whatever but i mean i think it's interesting comparing them head to head right because um you know if you're buying it and you, you're really set on getting a, a spider co manix too then you know you see the xl it's you know it's worth it to know the difference i think so we'll look at the regular manix 2 first regular manix 2 um 4.9 ounces 4.9 ounces and the Manix 2 XL 5.2 and 5.2 yeah a little bit heavier on the XL but not really substantial uh, I wouldn't call that substantial at all really as far as uh as far as uh the weight goes you know 0.3 of an ounce uh ounce to inch ratio is uh not, not really that great on this but that doesn't really bother me that much um you know, um, you can get, you can get lightweight versions of the Manix too. And, uh, maybe even the XL, I'm not hundred percent sure on that, but if they're not here, uh, if they don't exist, I'm sure Spyderco will, 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 uh, put them out, uh, eventually because they, they make all kinds of variations of every knife they got. But, um, you can definitely get the Manix too, uh, in like the FRN, the lightweight version of it, which I'm sure cuts a, a lot back on the weight. Now, the 4.9 ounces, that's, to me, that, you know, you're looking at three inches of cutting edge, uh, three and three eighths on the blade with 4.9 ounces. That's over the ounce and inch ratio by a good little bit, but it's not really too bad. It's not like, you know, you're lugging around seven, eight ounces, you know. To me, once you get over, uh, really once you get over like like eight ounces uh seven to eight ounces is when you start really noticing it in the pocket especially if you're just wearing regular pants you know 
Um, if you're wearing like gym shorts or, or something thinner, thinner pants or whatever, I'd, I'd probably recommend the, you know, definitely recommend this one, but I'd more so recommend the, uh, the, the Manix 2 Lightweight, which I intend on getting one of those. There's actually a, a couple of different variations out right now I'd like to check out. Um, but the reason I got the S30V versions of both of these, this is a stock version of both of these with just the black G10 and the S30V. Um, the reason I got that is I wanted to compare both of them as far as cutting with the same steel, right? And also, uh, I, I thought, you know, if I got the stock version of it, it's a really good platform for, uh, for customization, which these are two of the only Spydercos that I've got. Um, uh, I think I've got, well, yeah, I've got a couple more, but, um, most of the Spydercos I have are, are customized, um. In one way or another, you know, extra scales, extra clip, aftermarket, stuff like that, you know. But uh, these two are, are still stock just because I haven't decided on what I want to do yet as far as customization goes for them. But anyway, um, I think that's only the second rant of this video. I don't know if anybody out there is still watching. It's a miracle, I guess, but uh, I sure do appreciate it. Uh, let's see. We'll go ahead and go to... Hardware check on both of them. T8 is what that is. That's the T8. Uh, body screw T8, T8. Body screw T8, T8. Pivot. I think that's a T10. Seems like it's a little loose. And check out the T10. Yep, that's a T10. That's a T10. That's awesome. Uh, not a captive pivot on either one of them. All right, but um, T10 on the pivot is, is definitely a good thing. And I'm almost positive that these uh, clip screws are going to be T6. There's a standard spider coat clips that this thing takes. The same one as Paramilitary 2. Yeah. That, uh, that's T8. Or no, that's T6. And that. Huh. That is rounded out. Now, I think I have swap the clip out on this thing before but no <laughs> unless I somehow wound up swapping clips back and forth and ended up with T8 that is T8 which is weird that's awesome you know so on on the regular Mannix what I've got and I, I'm pretty sure that I haven't swapped the screws around but I'm not 100% positive I had I've swapped my spider code clips a lot but uh that's T8 T8 and t10 which is awesome that is really awesome the only way that you can get better than that is if that was a captive pivot this is uh t8 on these two that's t10 t10 t8 and also uh t6 on the clip you know which isn't that big of a deal for a pocket clip but you know I, I'm not, i have no issue with the hardware on this one so we did that let's move along to uh i guess you can see the pocket check on it uh, there's a little bit of a difference whenever you're looking at the old blue jeans here when you're carrying them in pocket and uh, This is a stock clip on there stock spider code clip. So that's the Manix 2. All right, here's the Manix 2 XL Put that in there So that's what you're looking at um, definitely uh, Definitely more of a deeper, I guess you could call it, carry, even though it's not a deep carry with the Manix 2 than the XL. All right. But um, I actually prefer, um, I don't like this much knife sticking out in general, but when I'm carrying the Manix 2 XL, I like that sticking out just because of that extra little part right there that helps you, uh, that helps you grab it with the XL. And that's one of the, that's one of the visible main differences on these two knives whenever I'm looking at them is this one's got it's easier to tell whenever they're open but the Manix 2XL has got if you're looking at them almost like an old uh, pistol grip kind of thing going on here All right it's got this extra little nub here so that really that that helps with ergonomics a lot it doesn't look like it but to me that that helps a lot with ergonomics um uh, i've got i wear a, a large size glove 
which is to say I have average, you know, maybe slightly under average size hands. I'm not sure, but, you know, I don't wear a small. I don't wear a, a, a double X. Um, so I have uh, regular size hands, I'd say, you know, maybe a little chubby. But um, so that's that's the grip on the that you're looking at with the Manix 2XL. A lot of extra room back here, but that's good whenever you want to choke back, you know, which is also a good thing, you know because you've got this excess blade excess length you know that could come in handy um the manix 2 you know choke back you're looking at that your pinky you know if your hands are around the same size as mine average hands um still on there you know you can get a full grip but choked up it's really super comfortable you know just as the same as the the xl is with that forward finger choil and that jump thumb ramp like it is that is super slicey uh super comfortable good cutting right there just like this is you know and as far as ergonomics go um this is comfortable all the way around that they've got jimping um really cool aggressive looking jimping right there it's like a jimp fest whenever you look at the manics right so you look at the liner it's jump 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 you know all right there jimping right there jumping underneath for your finger there right so that this is uh pretty ergonomic design i'd say uh same thing for the regular manix too you know jumping all over the place thumb finger you know and the grip right there all right there you know it, it is super comfortable so that's one thing that uh that i really enjoy about that knife so that is out the way and i guess we'll go ahead and do i, I don't think i did size comparisons did i which i normally do in the beginning but uh let's see we'll go ahead and get the this is the hogue deca or no that's the the rsk mk1 g10 uh ritter hogue so you see it it's more along along the size of the the regular manix right um than the manix too Although it almost has the cutting edge of the the Manix 2XL. Um, let's see. Well, we'll go ahead and keep that out there. Let's look at the Hogue Deca. Position these right. Probably help if you guys could see them, right? Manix 2X, Manix 2XL, and the Manix 2. That's against the RSK MK1 and the Hogue Deca. You know, definitely both of them are bigger than the uh, than the Hogue Deca. So VV Vision FG, QSP Penguin, regular size QSP Penguin, right? So both of them are larger than the Penguin. And last but not least, we'll do some Spider Co's. That's the Paramilitary Two. So, you know, now you can kind of see the similarities between the two ergonomic lines between the two are, are, are really similar. Um, the, uh, both of them have that cut out for finger toil, you know, different lengths for both, you know, both, although this doesn't have the hump that the PM2 has, definitely both of them have jimping right there. So, um, definite similarities right there in size. Um, and this is the smaller version of the paramilitary two. That's a pair of three, pair of three lightweight actually. So definitely bigger than the uh, pair of three lightweight. And that is, let's get it out. That's the native five. Um, so you can you can definitely tell that it's larger than the native five. This is a lightweight version of the native five with some aftermarket scales. But um, you can definitely tell it's uh. It's more along the, the size of the, the lines of the size of the paramilitary too. So I think I did all the specs, man. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of different with, with two knives on here. Maybe I'll, I'll put this as a battle video or something, I guess. I don't know. Um, you could, I guess you could say it's a battle, you know, really between the two. It, it's, uh, it's good to see them neck to neck, I think, you know, just to, to get an idea of you know which one you would prefer um i love spider co so i prefer both of them uh i like larger knives you know i really like the uh i like them for different reasons if i'm if i'm going out in the woods or uh 
you know, out, out doing something that might require a larger knife, um, you know, with a little more length, a little more heft or whatever, I'll take the XL. Um, everyday carry, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the with the regular Manix 2, you know. Um, but it is a little lighter, a little smaller, so a little bit easier to carry there. So points to it for that, I guess, on that one. Um, this has got Spyderco's ball bearing lock, right? So that's a, uh, it's kind of like a crossbar style axis uh, kind of lock, just in the way that you open and close it. Um, other than that, it, it's a lot different than than that on, on how it actually works. But uh, the open and closing method um, is very similar to the crossbar style lock. So there's a ball bearing that's behind these two covers right here that's uh, pushed up by this spring, right? So whenever you slide this ball bearing back, it lets go of the blade and the blade will close. So there's that notch right there. This is a little dirty. I apologize for that. I got to clean it. There's that notch right there, right? So whenever this thing slides open like that, that ball bearing is gonna go right here pretty much. So whenever that activates, it is solid, it's locked solid. There's no blade play in this thing, left down, up or right. Um, you still get kind of like the fidgety factor that a lot of people enjoy with uh, with the paramilitary two you know pair of three smock stuff like that you know you can uh you can definitely flick this open open and close uh no problem middle finger flick you know thumb flick slow roll it whatever good to go on that end and same thing goes for the the xl version of it you know there's there's nothing wrong with uh with the deployment on that either and it's actually really enjoyable for a larger knife for that so I guess I, I can't really think of anything else to talk about with these two. Uh, that's pretty much it. If anybody's still watching, I sure do appreciate you guys sticking around to the end. Um, but uh, the main difference that you're looking at, aside from the obvious, you know, the size and a little bit of weight there between the two, um, you know, blade length and everything, cutting edge, uh, the main difference between the two is actually the... Uh, put them up next to each other like that maybe you can see it better yeah it's actually the that little i guess i call it a pistol handle almost you know um that, that's kind of what it reminds me of when curved down like that kind of like old flint lock or something you know um it does give a little bit of extra uh lock in you know ergonomically although without it it's fine too but that's the main difference between the two aside from the the size difference so Anyway, um, hope you guys liked the video. Hope somebody's still watching out there. Um, I have no idea what the attention span is for, uh, you know, for videos. Sometimes I look at it whenever I'm recording. I'm like, oh, man, all right, that's 15 minutes in, and I'm just doing sizes and stuff. Nobody's going to see this, you know, or, or whatever, you know. But uh, I like to do a full and, and complete thorough review and, I do tend to ramble some too, so, you know, maybe I need to work on that a little bit, but, uh, I like to be thorough and I like, uh, I like to put my, my whole thoughts and, uh, observations and stuff out there. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching and that has been the review of the Spyderco Manix 2 and the Spyderco Manix 2 XL, both of them in CPM, um, S30V and both of them are available right now on uh and i'll link i'll link them both down below on one you know from one night nice side or another but um subscribe to the channel if you're not already like the video if you like the content and i really appreciate you guys watching and stick around because there'll definitely be more content see you guys on the next one